Okay, so this is March 26, CKPI call um, coming off from uh, KubeCon. So just wanted to share some of the discussions we have had in KubeCon regarding this. Um, so uh, <clears throat> Eddie and, and folks who are not able to make it to KubeCon, there was a there was some kind of discussion around how to best move forward with with SIG API. And um, the, the conclusion of that discussion was that there is some kind of uh, concern where if we were to make a SIG API um, block on PRs, then we might not have enough folks in in the SIG API group to um, you know cater to the workload of reviewing all changes um, going into the queue part. So in light of that, the guidance was that we should instead focus on a tool that catches the backward compatibility break. Um, the the one I have um, POC'd. Uh, in the design doc, um, that is basically a fuzzy tester, and you you can have like a unit test wired up to catch um, API incompatible changes. And if we have that tool, then um, that will ease the burden a little bit on on the uh, reviewers, and then we can think about um, formalizing the uh, the group through owners and and blocking PRs. I think that was my takeaway. Um, Lubo was also a part of the discussion. Lubo, um, do you have anything to add on top of this? Maybe just a note uh, that, you know, nothing is, uh, nothing is against us to actually block the PRs in the future. Maybe we just need to prove that we have the bandwidth and willingness to work on this. And enough people at the same time. Yeah. Because even now, these PRs need to be reviewed from somebody. So I guess uh, these people can just sign up to the SIG API. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand this is the, I understand what is the, I understand what the, you guys are saying, I, but I, I basically disagree. But, uh, but, but that's the case anyway today. So it's not that we are something changed here. The fact that there is no not enough people means that the current uh, workflow is is broken. The problem now is that everyone, every SIG, or every individual, or two uh, at least two pairs, that there needs to be two pairs, and that's all, can get something in, and it already happened, like multiple times. And that causes caused a lot of problems without commitment of even the of someone that is supposed to continue maintaining that that stuff. And that there is the problem as I see it. So the fact that you don't have people, then the whoever needs to take care of that, they should take care of that. They cannot put a, a feature in without putting people in that sixth so so that it can be checked. And this is my I guess may, maybe my aggressive view of this, but uh, I do understand that currently there is no agreement there. But telling me that, uh, tell, telling me that the argument being that there are not enough people to have uh, uh, time to look at API changes from a perspective of the API, that I, I feel uncomfortable in general. Because we'd already see this problem. I think, uh, like so. we we should put it in a different way, right? It so so until now there are only like handful of people, not even handful. Like we can count on fingertips. We've been looking into this area, right? So there are two things that we should be doing. Either we should one go after automation and have a reasonable um, you know, uh, have some kind of automation that at least assists us in, in finding these problems. That will help in bringing down a workload a little bit. The second thing is 
popularizing this effort so that people are interested in coming and, and joining us, right? And it's just, it's not just joining for the sake of joining. I think we need to internalize whatever we are doing here to uh, other contributors. Like this is really valuable skill to have uh, across different projects. And yeah, that that is much, much harder um, to do. Um, so those are my thoughts. Um, and and because of that, I think that we could focus on on automation. And you know, as as we go ahead and do the work and get get more popular, maybe we can find people coming in and joining. Yeah, I'm I'm not against automation. If if we can, if something can be automated and. It's very welcome. I'm just saying that probably in, in many cases, it will not be enough. Like not having control of, of everyone adding new CRDs, new fields without control, not thinking about it for a enough period of time about alternatives. That's the, that's the problem that I see today. Yeah. So yeah. I think that one needs to be... That needs to be somehow resolved. I, I don't know how. I'm. I'm not. I'm, I'm. I don't feel that I have the solution, but. But I think that needs to be resolved. Otherwise, it's out of control. It's like. It yeah. Doesn't doesn't. So, so I yes, think you can one... start with what we can do, as, as you said. Yeah, and and I think one thing regarding this that was discussed is that, um. So the problem that was brought up in the discussion is that let's say even if we agree that this is a good idea and we want to go ahead and achieve this um how we how do we do that because at the project root level we have certain approvers and um you know they can even if we have sig api they would be able to um, override things um onto that so one potential solution was that having a separate uh, owner's file in the in the API directories will help um, with the formalities of this. And that was considered as a potential solution that if we can prove out that we have enough um, people here to, to cover the SIG um, workload, we could potentially have a owner's file uh, blocking PR um PRs introducing new APIs um, in in that um, API directory. Yeah, I think that's but that was already I think that initiative already started. Like uh, most of the SIGs have now owners and have uh, identify ownership areas and they have their uh, maintainers and specific reviewers it, 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 and labels and what uh, all this stuff. So that already, I think that already started. I don't know if the SIG API added something like that or no. I think they did. I think there was something about it. No, I, I think SIG API is missing this part. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's largely because of this concern that will we have enough people to uh, to carry this SIG forward? I think. I think my take from the KubeCon conversation was that there is the, there is a lack of unanimity across the board whether a SIG for this is required or we should organize ourselves in different way, maybe a working group or, or something else. So that's why I think we have not uh, created a, a SIG API charter and and um, processes for it. So yeah, I I think we we do have some work ahead of us in order to convince people that this is actually a good idea. Yeah. So, but I I, I don't I was not in the discussion. I can tell you what I'm what I'm hearing or what I'm feeling. Sometime is that. And I'm feeling it as someone that adds uh, maybe APIs and change stuff myself. 
So having a having a team that can, or having a, a group of people that can block my thing, my features in my own sig, that's like something that is uh, on one side is good because someone is reviewing it from a specific context, which is the API. But that's also like a disadvantage. The disadvantage is they will slow me down, right? So yeah. I'm the question is. Is that also, I'm pretty sure that that's one of the reasons not to have it because then you, you slow down the project. That's the, that's the, that's one of the disadvantages. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But, but I think we, we have to be careful of uh, what point of project we are on right now. So we have, we have gone to V1, right? Um, we are a reasonably stable project um, and people have been using it in, in production. So I think even Kubernetes made this shift a, a while ago where it it put in certain guardrails and, and processes to slow down people so that um, changes are not put into place that can block uh, future upgrades or that can you know, cause problems to people who are upgrading. So I think it slowing down is part of the process of project maturing. And I'm not sure if we can have both trade off where we can be careful of the changes that are coming in at the same time, be as fast as possible. I, I think there is a a very realistic engineering trade-off there. So, yeah, I, I think I agree on, on velocity will be reduced, but I think at the same time, that will be for uh, for the greater good, I think. Yes, we I agree with you here completely. But, it, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, but it's not implied uh, directly, right? So if we, it depends. So. If we don't restrict others to to approve the API stuff, then we don't really uh, throttle the bandwidth of the project. And then when then if we do the other way around it, and we actually say okay, only a couple of folks can review this stuff, then we might actually impact the bandwidth. But then it's a question of how can we be sure that that impact will be uh, will be impacted uh, minimally, and uh, the it will be more outweighed by the stability of the reviews, maybe. Yeah, but uh, I think the the point is that <laughs> that's the I think this is what I said uh, before. It's no, we want it to be impacted. I want it to, to them to slow down, really. I mean, I don't want them to invent a, an API and get it in in a week. I want them to, to invent a new API, send it to as a design proposal, discuss it for a few weeks or until there is an agreement. And then when there is an agreement and everything looks fine, they, they, it was checked from all the angles of the API upgrades, alternative, whatever, only then get it in. And yes, it will be much slower. And that's good because currently it, uh, many things are getting in that you are, you, get, you are committing to for the next five, 10 years. And you want to avoid this. You want to get in only small things. I mean, sorry, not a lot of things and very slowly. So you will not have to commit on things uh, endlessly. That's that's the I guess that's the point. But uh, yes, you are agree. You we agree that uh, at some level someone is to agree to this. Like the existing maintainers need to agree to to this part. And uh, as I as I see, the existing maintainers are the potential one that should be placed under the SIG API and have the power to to look at the at the changes from their perspective and make sure it's they are good. Not as a head of a specific feature, but as a head of uh, of the API. That's so yeah, I, I mean, I mean, what I wanted to express is that uh, we still want, uh, can 
propose the SIG API, set up the directory ownership and such, and, but still allow all the approvers to be as part of it, right? And then we yes. can, in the future, iteratively go into the state where we are on, or there will be only a group of people responsible for this. Yes, but I do, even... I do agree. I do agree. Like slowing down is a good thing. Even now, when you think about it, you, you have release only every three months. So it doesn't really matter if you get merge your PR in the in the first week or in the second month or of the release cycle. What what the matters is to get the changes reviewed before the release. Yes, I think, but just just to be let's let's go to the practical part. So I think what you just said now that you can put everyone else in that. I mean, all the maintainers can get into this as approvers for this. Uh, for this ownership file, right? So that sounds really good, but the, the only thing that we can add, I mean, what we can contribute here is to, and I think this, we discussed it, uh, I think in the in the past that we need to build some uh, basic, I don't know, basic rules, the policy uh, areas to that needs to be checked, something like that. And that one, when, uh, when a maintainer is added to this ownership file, he needs to know all of this and commit to to follow that uh, that policy. After we agree on, I mean, not only us, everyone agrees that this is a good policy or these are the good points that needs to be checked. And then they can be there, but not everyone will want that probably. So that's the only thing that I think we could uh, contribute here as a as a SIG. Like you, you create a. A policy rules, uh, good guidance, however you want to call it, and then whoever joins to be a reviewer of uh, of an API or a approval for the API, they need to know about it and learn about it, and then they can do that. And I think we could see. Convince... I have, I have a little bit of a different view in this direction. Um, <clears throat> so if we set up this API right, and if everyone in the root project has um, access to SIG API. Um, I'm not sure how it will be different from what we have right now. As in, effectively, the things will not change. We will just have a new charter and a new group of folks coming in, but because those folks don't have powers to hold things and stop things from merging, it will continue to be the same uh, status quo we have without the SIG. So th there is a sudden difference. Uh, I think the first one is, and I'm, I'm not sure, so we would need to uh, confirm it, but I think Pro does uh, prefer to request a review from uh, the subdirectory owners. So the Owners, which would be the API owners, <clears throat> would be request uh, requested first. The second uh, second difference is that you could then uh, have reviewers and approvers only for this subset of uh, uh, subset of the of the code base, uh, meaning that you know for newcomers, it's going to be much easier to pick up. Pick a subset of code or subset of area of interest in the in the in Qbert. So it's uh, I do agree it's not no difference from the status quo of that the approvers are all, all root and have access to all everything and they might even approve API changes if they don't understand the the consequences. But you still gain. Uh, the ability to for the newcomers and maybe to our, to help out the pro a little bit. Yeah. But but I that's I think there is a sub subtle. Uh, I mean, what you just say it's like yes the root code the we have a problem with that everyone is a root approver but 
but if you put I'm, I'm let's say that you have 10 approvers today is root right let's say that you all the approvers agree to follow the sig api policy or whatever we want to call it right if the ones that that uh, agree to it they are added to that ownership of the that sig api ownership file right so we expect that that's like a in, formally you you say that these people are the ones that are uh, should be asked to approve changes in this uh, in this area and they by adding themselves to that ownership file they they agree with the policies of that needs to be followed to approve api changes is it does that make sense like yeah um, yeah, so, I think that will be a, a good uh, starting point. And, and I think one of the very first policies we could put in that is no API chain should go in without a, a design doc linked to it. At this point, I think that's um, a minimum we should do. Yeah. And by the way, I don't know if you know that, but Pro does allow you to I mean, you could just copy all the list of the approvers from the root into the ownership file, and you can mark, uh, mark there that uh, that it should ignore all, all previous ownership files. So let's say, that, uh, what does it mean is that you can put, for example, three people in that ownership file that agree to go over the API stuff, and you can say all the root approvers are ignored. You could do okay. that. I mean, Pro allows you to do it. We discussed this option, yeah. Yeah, we know yeah. about it. So, but just moving them, most of the people is the same. Just it just uh, says that um, I don't know. It's like it's an option. I don't know if anyone wants to use it, but it's it's option. And yes, what I what you said sounds good. To start with something doesn't matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Plus one only. Just a question, do we have a, already the charter, like a, basically PR on the community repository explaining what we, what the API want to, SIG API want to do, uh, what are the responsibilities and such? Uh, I know we, I know we had a, uh, like one PR, but uh, I'm more asking if we have the one which would align with the, with the current, uh, current proposal, which is drive, drive by Fabian. No, we don't, we don't have a formal charter. I, I think there are, so in this call, I think because of the nature of this call, only people in favor of this idea are, are present here. I think there are folks who are not really in favor um, and they are missing voices. And because of that, um, I've, I've stayed back on putting a, an official charter. But I think at a general level, I see two uh, main, uh, I, I see two main responsibilities of this egg. One is to evolve the API in a backward compatible, forward compatible and graceful way. Second is to collect all the practices in a document, the policy document that Ed was mentioning and, and have that as a living, breathing document for people to come in and, and take a look at. I see those two as like main responsibilities of the SIG. And then the third one is whatever um, automation and tooling is required to make life of people in the SIG easier. And that could be like a subsidiary third um, mission. Th those are the three things I had in mind. But we need to put it in paper, on paper. I think we can we can open the we can send a PR to add the charter. I don't see a problem. 
I mean, even if there if there is opposition, so we will get the feedback, right? Yeah, I I agree. Yes, I don't see a problem with opening it up to the to PR. Okay. Okay. I think that's all I had for this particular discussion. Um, I think we can move on to the next one. Uh, are there people on the call who find this link to be not working? It didn't work for me. Okay, interesting. Let me see. Wait, the project is not working. So the first link doesn't work for me. It uh, gives me a 401, 404, sorry. Uh, but let me actually use uh, a browser where I have my credentials. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, so if I'm using a browser where I'm not signed in, then I can't see it. Yeah, I just tried it. It gives me a 404. Yeah, well, it makes sense to be signing. I think it, it's only allowed for the uh, organization, if you are part of the organization, to see. Uh, yeah, you have to sign in. So could we get a, a read-only access for others? I mean, that would be reasonable. I think it's already read-only, for even for me. Do you mean to say that read only for everyone who who is not even part of the organization? Yes, I mean we we are not doing anything illegal <laughs> to hide it. So yeah, uh, you're right. But I am not sure if I can edit this. So somebody who is an admin has to change the visibility from private to public here. So I think we we might have to reach out to. Daniel or somebody with higher privileges. Yeah. But is it, uh, not that I, I don't mind, but. but the, yeah. the relevant question is what's in the, behind that link and does everybody need to see it or does just a few people need to see it? It, it depends on the information and the people. Oh. I think you. I think the information is here only for people that need to work on things, not, uh, I mean, to see the status of the working, that things that are working. So the, it's it's basically for contributors of any kind. But if you okay. don't contribute, so, I don't know why is it useful. So what do I need to join? I think you just need to join the, the organization. The, there I'm is joined. a requirement to join the organization. The, I think the requirement is to have a few contributions. Like <laughs> it can be whatever, uh, either PR of uh, code or documentation or uh, issue. I don't know what, uh, there is a list of things. But okay. still, if, if someone thinks that- Contributions. Uh, to have, Dude, contributions to what? To Kubert, to yes. uh, CNCF in general, you know, just, Let's be clear about it. To the covert organization, who doesn't matter which repository, and, it, and there is a list of what does it mean. I think in the co in the covert community, okay, there should be a member member or something. And then the it express it says what you need to. The requirement are not high actually. Okay, where can I find that? Give me one second. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, so another, well, while Eddie finds that, another point is that yeah. this in, particular in my Yeah, my intention is not to lurk. My intention is to contribute. So I'm not no, just I, poker, I'm just for fun, yeah. 
what I'm saying is that this is this is the exact page we in behind that link, and we have shared that page publicly on the on the call, and it gets recorded on YouTube. So it's nothing like, uh, you know, something secretive. <laughs> the the information okay. is out there. You can easily open it up for read access anyway. So, I. I'm not sure if you'll be opening it up for right access, uh, but but read access is. I, I the topic was does it work? I click the link that views slash one. It does not work. Yeah, and I I sent you I sent the I sent the link. This is thank you, Edward. I think this is exactly the, uh, uh, the requirement to be a, a member in the organization. Awesome, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, yeah, so to quickly review um, this, so I know we have had a lot of discussions around the shadow node. Um, one thing to call out is that there was a discussion around this at KubeCon as well, and we received some direction from SIG auth, a Kubernetes SIG auth, where um, if if word handler uses kubelet's uh, service account on the node instead of having its own uh, service account then we are able to restrict the word handler uh, permissions to how much permissions a kubelet has and then by by virtue of that, Kubelet only allows modifying node object, which is represented by that particular Kubelet. So because of that, we will be solving uh, many problems just by using that particular uh, service account. Uh, so um, Lubo and I, did some offline scheming of the code and uh, scanning of the code, sorry. And <laughs> we have some some open items to you know check before proposing whether that particular uh, service account would be useful or not. Um, so just wanted to bring everyone on on board with with that particular discussion. I think Ram is, uh, I saw that Ram is working on it and he was supposed to send uh, an update about the summary of all the options. I don't know if that one is also included, but if it's missing, then I guess you could uh, ask him to add it as well. Uh, because so there are, the, the, the problems here were at, at least I, it depends how how back in the history you're going with this, like maybe how how back you go with to the sources of the need to patch the node. So it, it I think there are a lot of directions and there are a lot of things that need to be, I mean, need to be asked. But yes, I mean, I think he said he put there a lot of uh, options and I don't know if this one is one of them. I guess it is. So I don't know if he pushed the pushed it yet. Um, did no. he, I mean, just check if he pushed it today or something like that. If he didn't, then I guess he didn't do it. See no, the... I don't see it. Uh, I will push. ask him if he. I think he's working on it. Like there, there are there were uh, other options raised, and and uh, I mean the, my only feedback on this, uh, I think uh, Lubo knows about it as well. My only feedback here is that probably I will say that we never should have allowed the virt handler to touch the node anyway. Like the that was that is the original problem. I mean that was the solution to a problem. And the solution of is seen as a problematic with security issues. So now what the, what is the attempt is to solve that that the problem that the solution introduced. And I'm saying let's go back to the original uh, need to uh, to change the, to to patch the node 
and check if that can be avoided in general. But uh, but there are a lot of options. That it's like uh, I guess this this one. I, what I liked about this problem is that it opens up so many options that you get to learn like uh, half of Kubernetes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so I, I'm not sure where the current thought process is, but the as far as I am concerned, the only problem with using the Kubelet service account is that they restrict um, they restrict patch to labels in a certain subset. So if our labels are not following that convention, then um, we will not be able to use it. So either we have to migrate our labels to those that convention, or we'll have to have additional permissions on top of the kubelet to, to continue with our labels. Um, so that, that's an open item uh, to figure out. But apart from th that, uh, other things are falling into place where we are able to restrict permissions to only what kubelet requires. And, and that basically solves the CVE for us. Okay. So that brings me to the pull request um, reviewing. So the first four pull requests in this particular list are the ones that are newer from the last time what we reviewed. And I quickly skimmed through these two. They are just um, refactoring things. And even this one, it's um, refactoring uh, label host name. So it's actually changing the hard coded labels and bringing in the label from Kubernetes API. So nothing related to APIs in these three. The only one that's left is the cluster wide CPU feature um, disab disablement in Kubeboard. So we can talk a little bit about that. So I've only spent a little bit of time, but my understanding is that there are certain um, libword and KMU bugs where you need to disable some CPU flags when when creating a VMI. So the the idea is that if you run into this kind of situation, then what what launcher will read these flags and give a a domain xml file that will respect these flags and you can work around the uh, kmu bugs uh, as a as a result of introducing this api that's the context i have and my well well this is a good thing to target where Kubeboard is able to work around the bugs in, in libboard or KMU layer. The only open questions I have is that what would be our upgrade strategy once we ship this API and those KMU bugs are solved? Since API removal is not supported, in Kubernetes, at least until the discussions that we have uh, prove that it's not something we could achieve. What happens to the API after those bugs are, are handled at uh, KMO layer? I, can you can you just, can you, are you able to give like a two minutes overview of if you understood why is it needed, I tried to uh, read it, but I didn't have enough time. I understood that they want to, uh, that they don't want to use this specific hardware or something like that. If, if, but I'm not really sure what's the logic. So, um, 
it the my understanding is that if there are use cases where if if you want to um create a vm on certain hardware you require um these work around like you need to disable this cpu fake feature on the uh xml that is generated to work around the camo box and yeah, but we have a way to do that anyway so i don't get it like we have a it's like a not non-formal way but you could do a sidecar and it that's exactly what it does right so why do we need an api if i can do it with a sidecar I don't follow how we can do this through through a sidecar. Because the sidecar can, uh, you can put a sidecar in a, and then the sidecar will uh, will mutate the, the domain XML. Because the side, what I'm talking about is the web, the hook sidecars that we have in, uh, um, yeah. we have an API internally to add sidecars to the virt launcher. So it will, uh, so it will mutate the domain XML, per like that something that is beyond what uh, the regular code is doing. Now that's like a hook point that we have. So in in theory, we could always add like we could always deliver such a sidecar and even can decide to run it always if we find that there is such a problem and that sidecar will do whatever is needed to, if it detects there is a, it runs on a specific hardware that does something, then it will, it can play with the domain XML and do that change. Instead of having it, I mean, if it's temporary, as you said, if it's a transitional stage, it makes sense to do that instead of putting logic into the, into the core code, but I'm not really sure if that fits or not. Maybe it's uh, what I'm saying is total nonsense. No, I think I think it could fit because based on my understanding, what they want here is to have a cluster-wide feature that governs this, right? So, for example, one way, one thing where it could not fit is let's say if you want to have half of the vms um use the sidecar and the other half not use the sidecar then probably it might not fit um, e even then i think there is a annotation you can govern to opt certain vmis out of the sidecar list so i am i'm not sure even that is relevant i Based on my understanding, I think it would fit the sidecar use case. The, the only reason it did not come up in, in my uh, list of potential solution was that I was not sure if sidecar allows you to mutate the entire XML uh, objects. I have only used it to mutate the networking portions of it. So um, somehow I thought we were restricted in, in the networking part of things. But right. if it allows you to, you know, mutate entire XML, then I think it, it makes a lot of sense to use that. Yes, the only disadvantage, uh, yes, you can change whatever you want. It's like you, that the purpose of it is to change the domain XML per your need, like maybe add uh, fields that uh, usually the Hoover does not touch and you, but you need it specifically, then that's the place to do it. We use it in the network binding plugins for only for networking. But, uh, but what I wanted to say, the I guess the disadvantage is that I know that uh, some downstream project uh, do not, do not use it because it does introduce a, uh, it does has a small problem, small, big, I don't know, that uh, you don't want uh, to allow people to add whatever they want, whatever sidecar they want to your uh, to your v VM. So it's in in some downstream project, this is restricted. Like the API is not supported. Currently, it's feature-gated, if I'm not mistaken, that hook uh, sidecar thing. 
and uh, some may decide not to use it. Like, uh, so that's the only point that needs to be, I will say, checked. How can we do it in a in a good way? But anyway, it's that it's just a proposal. What I'm saying is that before we change the API, let's check what the other alternatives that do not require an API. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I I think that I agree with that part. So uh, other options are that instead of having this specific typed fields, we could have like an unsupported config, which is a string of, which is a map of string to interface. And then we can put all these kinds of agility features behind that uh, uh, unsupported uh, key. I know OpenShift has some kinds of um, features in, under under that, and and if we put it in that way, we don't have to continue to support it forever. Like when when Kemu and Libboard uh, changes come in, we can easily drop this key value pair and keep evolving the API in a graceful way. So. Those are the two options we have. Um, I think we should consider that in favor of API changes. Okay, I think I'm going to put that uh, here. And that's all, that's all I had. Does anyone have uh, other things? to bring up today. Okay, awesome. Thanks everyone for your time. Um, I'll see you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Alain. Good meeting.